What's going on, guys? Good evening, uh, Saturday night here uh, with the Earthmaster. Uh, it's about uh, 6.07 p.m. California time. Saturday, December 4, 2021 to date. Uh, latest earthquake on the Earthquake 3D globe, a 4.8 earthquake striking down in the Gulf of California region, a little bit further up north this time on the map. Let's go ahead and check that out real quick, uh, see what's going on out there around the Gulf of uh, California region. Uh, some earthquake activity striking out there last night. I uh, can see that 5.1 that struck uh, much much earlier uh, than this 4.8 that we've seen uh, within the last hour. Seems to be working its way up north a little bit. We have seen a migration of quakes up to the north around the southern end of the San Andreas Fault. Let's go ahead and check out the all magnitudes here uh, from the USGS. And you can see some microquakes kicking up. Uh, in a swarm type fashion here around the Brawley seismic zone uh, and uh, kind of at the northern end of the Imperial Fault and also down here south of the border on this on the Imperial Fault system a little bit further down uh, as well and of course here within the last hour that 4.8 uh, striking in this region over the last week we had seen a pretty good swarm of activity in the Gulf of California region and that is continuing today so need to be on watch here in the Southern California area, especially up here in this area of the uh, Imperial Fault, Brawley Seismic Zone, San Andreas Fault, uh, here for some possible movement. Just looking pretty active um, over the last few days in this region with no large scale movement. Uh, just kind of these little swarms of fours kicking off down south here and some microquakes around this region. So be on guard, Southern California region uh, for potential movement in that area. Working our way up north. Uh, a little bit of activity throughout the Ridgecrest region and through Nevada and the Antelope Valley area. Uh, let's see what we got down here around the Los Angeles region. A lot of microquakes out here. Um, nothing specific over here around the LA region. Just a little 1.9 near Santa Ana. Uh, a little bit of movement along the creeping section it looks like here on the San Andreas Fault and also up here around the Calaveras Fault system. Uh, a few microquakes taking place on that specific area. Uh, Northern California looking pretty quiet in terms of earthquake activity at the surface all through the Pacific Northwest as well. Uh, if we want to check the Canadian map here, we can swing back over here to the uh, Earthquakes Canada site and check out their activity. A little bit of movement. Uh, well, it doesn't look like a whole lot of new movement. Let's see here. And at least according to this map, Looks like it's still stuck on the last earthquake here from, I'm pretty certain that was a 3.6 from a day or so ago. I don't see any renewed earthquake activity here on this specific map. Uh, let's see here. Just not a whole lot of new stuff going on. Looking off here on the coast too, there's uh, not a whole lot of movement along the Cascadia, all pretty quiet on the north. Most of this movement from over a week ago and the yellow uh, circles there indicating that uh, uh, definitely over a week and uh, some of these orange ones within the week. But still nothing, nothing really new to discuss here at the uh, this area of the Cascadia and then of course outside Cascadia up towards the Alaska region. Uh, some earthquake activity within the last week, a couple of threes kicking off there. But uh, Overall, relatively quiet up and down the coast. It looks like of the uh, of the um, uh, Canadian region, British Columbia area. Let's go back down to the all magnitudes here. I'm, I still got a cold, folks. I'm not for sure what's going on, but definitely hitting me pretty hardcore today. Uh, earlier this morning, I was feeling it come on pretty quickly, and uh, boy, it's kicking! It is kicking in tonight. Let me tell you. Uh, there was a 5.1 along the Aleutian Trench. This 5.1 came after a 6.0 earthquake in the Indonesia area. This one pretty deep, 174 kilometers. And then just a short time later, very short time later, uh, we had that 5.1 in Alaska Aleutian Trench area. Seen some movement uh, kick off there uh, throughout the, uh, within the last couple hours. The six pointer that struck down here uh, is uh, just south of the Philippines along the Philippine Trench, uh, pretty deep subduction zone earthquake, 6.0. Uh, also seen some further movement around the Papua New Guinea area and uh, the Solomon Islands area with some uh, 
Pretty shallow earthquake activity for this region. A couple fives kicking off mid five there in the Indonesia region. Uh, a little bit of activity working its way to the west as well around the Middle East, including a deep 4.0 in Afghanistan, 217 kilometers for that earthquake. A little bit of activity out here around the Greece region as well. Atlantic looks pretty quiet except for this uh, earthquake down here in the South Sandwich Islands region where they had a 5.7. Pretty shallow earthquake at 10 kilometers around the uh, just west of the South Sandwich Trench. Surface quaking going on down there. South America remains relatively quiet with a 4.1. Other than that, uh, diminishing earthquake activity in South America. Puerto Rico Trench, not a whole lot of movement from this morning. And uh, just some activity kicking off off the coast in the Middle America Trench. Nothing major at the moment. It's just some uh, some surface quaking going on with a 4 and a 5.1 way up north, of course, in the uh, Gulf of California. Just kind of keeping an eye on this area pretty closely. What do we got here? Did this one just come in? 2.6? Uh, I believe it did as we were speaking. That one just came in a little bit ago, a couple minutes ago, right smack dab on the, uh, is that the, uh, that's a Hayward fault zone in the Bay Area. We were talking about this uh, Calaveras fault system here, and then this one just popped up, pretty shallow earthquake along the Hayward fault. This one here has been discussed uh, being a, a large potential for um, high percentage, I should say, of seeing a damaging earthquake uh, in the near future. Of course, very populated region as it runs up through Oakland, Berkeley, Richmond, uh, highly super populated, dense area, some, somewhere I don't like to be. Too many people in that region, let me tell you, no thank you. But nonetheless, a dangerous fault system that runs up there, and uh, we're seeing some activity kick up, kick up on it uh, just a couple minutes ago, 2.6 for now. But uh, West Coast definitely should be on guard with all this earthquake activity kind of ramping up, shooting up north and south. Bouncing out, uh, bouncing around all over the place here along the west coast. So be on guard, Southern Cal, to uh, about the Bay Area. Over here in the Southern Plains, all pretty quiet, folks. A couple of microquakes scattered about the land. Not a whole lot to discuss here. New Madrid zone, pretty quiet as well. Just a little 1.8 earthquake for that region of the world. I kind of wanted to go back here uh, over the last, um, well, we're going to do the uh, 2020 year, 6.0 and above and do a comparison to this year of 6.0 and above. We still got, uh, of course, it's early December and we can uh, we can still catch up on this. Actually, we're past that if you if you look at the numbers. This here is from 2020, 121 earthquakes of 6.0 and greater in the world. And you look at uh, this year's, right? We still got uh, quite a few days to go. 148 earthquakes of 6.0 and above. A lot of uh, so definitely a lot of movement uh, this year compared to last year when it comes to well, not only sevens and eights, but uh, sixes as well. So definitely been uh, on a heightened sense of movement uh, along the plates here. A lot of areas uh, roughly about the same uh, when it comes to being hit with earthquake activity. The only difference that I see uh, compared to last year or this year compared to last year is this region right here. Not a whole lot of movement when it comes to 6.0 and above along the Mariana Trench. Of course, we had that um, six-pointer that did strike down here along the Philippine Plate uh, earlier today, earlier uh, earlier this evening, I should say. Uh, the prior year, we've seen some six-pointers up and down this trench region. Um, so kind of a little lot la loss of lack of activity here in this region. Also up here to the north, along the Japan Trench, you're still looking at uh, that activity. Even last year, we didn't really see too much in the way of six pointers around this region up here. We did see some activity earlier this year, a little swarm of movement here off the coast of Japan, kicked up a couple sixes uh, in that region. But there's still that little area right up here uh, to the north that just hasn't seen a sufficient amount of release of pressure uh, even last year. Uh, let's see here. Not a whole lot along the West Coast. I did want to show you guys the uh, movement. Of course, we've been seeing a lot of activity throughout the Candelaria Hills, Nevada region, and up around the Sawtooth Fault area in Idaho. These are the two earthquakes that uh, are 
We're still seeing the aftershock sequences to this year, to this date. 6.5 up in Idaho, right at the northern end of the Sawtooth Fault System. And the 6.5 here uh, around the Tonopah, Nevada area, Candelaria Hills region is where the uh, swarming activity has been kicking up. So it's kind of cool to go back and see which earthquakes uh, where the larger ones struck and to look at them today and see that they're still getting quite a bit of aftershock sequences uh, up here, even in the Idaho area. We've got to go back seven days to see all that movement uh, around the Sawtooth Fault area, which is over here. Well, it was way off. I was looking at this little uh, this little road network here. Uh, I'm a little. It's, I'm, I'm taking Dayquil, so I'm hoping this thing kind of helps me out a lot because I'm not ready to go to sleep with any Nyquil at uh, six o'clock in the evening. It's just too early. I'm not that old yet. <laughs> uh, even though a nap does sound kind of nice, I wouldn't mind taking a little nap here uh, at six o'clock. Of course, I'll be up the rest of the night if I do. So anyway, yeah. So that's the uh, aftershock activity following those two earthquakes um, that struck in the. Um, in those regions back in 2020. Uh, let's see what else we got here, folks. Trimmer activity in the Cascadia subduction zone. There's about 26 epicenters, it looks like, here on the map. Uh, southern Oregon, extreme southern Oregon, uh, and the portions of Northern California as well. So southern end of the Cascadia getting in on a little bit of uh, trimmer activity. Not a whole lot, just a little bit. I don't think we've seen a, um, I don't know, it's just this thing's been acting kind of odd. Uh, far as the lack of activity recently uh, it does get its periods where it, it, there is no activity or at least very minimal but man there was about two weeks there pretty much nothing going on uh, when it comes to the trimmer activity in the Cascadia uh, the Yellowstone map here looks pretty absent of earthquake activity as well looks like something kicked off over here around the Maple Creek region see that signature within the last hour um, let's see if we can catch the uh, map here. It, it's kind of odd. I I don't see anything popping up here that would indicate that signature on the USGS map here. And it looks like it's a localized earthquake within uh, the uh, Yellowstone Park. And the reason why I can tell is because of the sharpness, uh, that signature of a localized earthquake here, very spiky and very short. Uh, and it also showed up on the stations here in the northwest corner of the park uh, and, and not on the other one. So definitely a localized earthquake, potentially a start of, who knows, maybe a swarm over here in the Yellowstone area. We'll have to see. Uh, the eastern part of the Yellowstone region looks pretty quiet. Some interference here. This darker line activity is wind, I believe. A lot of times in summertime we see that wind event kick up like that. I'm not for sure what the wind conditions are up there in Wyoming, but to me that looks weather related uh, as it's showing up throughout the entire park region. And over here in the uh, eastern part, some interference being created by that wind, a little bit different sensitivity settings and trigger settings when it comes to this instrument picking up any type of readings or vibrations from the ground. But uh, wind can also do this, and that's kind of what we're seeing on this seismograph, on these two seismograph stations there. They've been having a little bit of uh, issues recently in that region, that looks like. All right, folks, I'm going to jump off here and uh, just kind of relax a little and enjoy the evening. And I uh, hope everyone has a uh, good, safe night. Be prepared. Like I said, Southern California, West Coast region should be on guard with uh, all the activity and movement down south. Have a good night, folks. We'll chat you guys a little bit later. Peace out.